In this video, we'll explore the key binding notation that is used within Emacs, as well as try to understand the historical context surrounding it. Let's get started. One of the acronyms invented for Emacs is Escape Meta Alt Control Shift. This is of course a joke, based on the number of modifier keys used within Emacs. One of the main reasons why Emacs has so many modifier keys is that the keyboards used for the Lisp machines of the 1980s heavily influenced its initial design. Here you can see an image of a Space Cadet keyboard which was used on the Lisp machines at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the 1980s in the United States. This keyboard itself has seven modifier keys. Yes, seven. It has Control, Meta, Super, Hyper, Shift, Top and Greek. Given the influence that keyboards of the Lisp machines of 1980s had on the development of Emacs, and the prominent positions that the control and meta keys had on these keyboards, it's easy to understand why Emacs key bindings use the control and meta keys so prominently. The problem is that when Emacs was ported to the IBM PC, the typical keyboards did not have a meta key. You can see this in the image, which shows an early version of the typical American IBM PC keyboard. To deal with the issue of not having a meta key, by default, Emacs will interpret the escape and alt keys as the meta key. This is fine in practice and is the reason why when you press ALT on your keyboard, an M appears in the mini buffer. The M stands for Meta. The only thing that I would recommend that you change on the typical keyboard layout is to map the caps lock key to also be a control key. This is to avoid the dreaded Emacs pinky issue. To find out more, you can check out another video on the course. In practice, there are only three modifier keys which you need to worry about when dealing with Emacs. Control, Meta and Shift. Although you can customise Emacs on your keyboard to make use of more modifiers such as Super and Hyper, I have not heard or seen of many people doing so. Before we move any further, it's important that we understand some concepts about key sequences in Emacs. There are two types of key sequence, a complete key sequence and an incomplete key sequence. A complete key sequence invokes a command. For example, the complete key sequence Control X Control F invokes the command Find File. Any key sequence which is not long enough to invoke a command is an incomplete key sequence. Incomplete key sequences are also known as a prefix or prefix key. When you enter a prefix such as Control X, Emacs will display the incomplete key sequence in the mini buffer and wait for you to enter more characters until what you have entered equals a complete key sequence. As an Emacs user, you should familiarize yourself with the most important key sequences that result in meaningful commands being performed. You should also familiarize yourself with the key binding notation used within Emacs. Don't worry though, by the end of the course you'll be familiar with both. I mentioned earlier that there are three main modifier keys which you will use within Emacs to enter key sequences. Control, which is given the shorthand notation of capital letter C. Meta, which is given the shorthand notation of capital letter M and which you can insert using the ALT key. And Shift, which is given the shorthand notation of capital letter S. As we mentioned earlier, complete Emacs key sequences are bound to commands. Emacs commands are usually named using English words separated by dashes. Emacs is customizable and you could rebind any of these key sequences to run any other command if you wanted to. When a shorthand for a modifier is followed by a dash, it means the modifier key must be held down and then you should press the next character in the sequence. So, for example, C-A runs the command move beginning of line and the way to enter this key sequence is to hold control down and press A. When a key sequence has a space in it, that means anything before the space is a prefix. So, in the key sequence control X control F, the control X is a prefix. Now, there are two ways in which you can enter this whole key sequence. The first way is to hold control, press X, and then release your fingers totally from the keyboard. You can see here that Emacs is showing the incomplete key sequence that you have entered so far, and is awaiting for you to enter the rest. Now you can hold control down and press F to enter the rest of the key sequence. The other way in which you can enter it and the way in which I usually do is to hold control down and then press X followed by F. Here you did not have to release control so it's slightly faster. To illustrate a slight annoyance which you may come up against when starting to use Emacs I've shown the key sequence control X F which runs the command set fill column. Don't worry about what the command does, that's not important. Instead, I want you to focus on how similar it is to the find file command, and how you could very easily accidentally mistype one for the other. So, 
After entering the Ctrl X prefix, if you hold Ctrl down and press F, it will run the find file command. However, if you don't hold Ctrl down and just press F, it will run the set fill column command. As a beginner, you will probably make mistypes like this until you get used to the way in which you enter key sequences within Emacs. Don't worry, when you accidentally run the wrong command, you can usually just undo it or press Ctrl G to quit. Let's move on to the meta modifier. You can enter the meta modifier using the Alt or Escape key. For now, let's just focus on using the Alt key. The meta X sequence runs the command execute extended command. When you run this, you will then be prompted to enter the name of a command, for example find file, and then press enter to execute the command. This is an alternative way of executing commands by name rather than by their corresponding key sequence, which as we know for the find file command is Ctrl X Ctrl F. You can use meta X as a convenient way of running those commands which do not have a corresponding key binding. The meta modifier is also used to enter other commands such as meta F which moves the point forward a word. Now, we need to take a second to discuss the differences between using ALT as a meta modifier and using ESCAPE. When using ALT as the meta modifier you must hold down the ALT key and press the next character in the key sequence. However, when you use ESCAPE you do not have to hold the key down. For example, you can type ESCAPE and then release all your fingers off the keyboard and then press F to move forward a word. You cannot do this when you use ALT as the meta modifier. You have to keep ALT pressed down when you press F. This subtle difference is why when you use escape it appears as ESC in the mini buffer rather than an M dash. It is a slightly different signal being sent to Emacs. But what exactly is the point of having two different ways of entering the meta modifier? Well, not having to hold the escape key to enter the meta modifier is a feature which is useful on certain text terminals where using ALT does not function reliably. It is more than likely you will never have a problem with using ALT as a meta key. I know I haven't, but if you do, then remember you can always use the escape key as a last resort. When it comes to the shift modifier key, although it is attached to certain commands such as pasting text, in reality I really only use it to enter uppercase characters and also to potentially highlight sections of text. Certain commands may include a mix of modifier keys being used. For example, the key sequence control m l means for the command to be invoked, you need to hold down control as well as meta and then press L. Also, you may come across commands which use certain characters that require you to press shift to be entered, even though shift does not appear in the key sequence. For example, consider the command query replace, which has the key sequence meta percent. To enter the percentage character, I need to hold shift and type the number five at the top of my keyboard. Although the key binding does not include a shift modifier, you need to hold down meta and shift and then press 5 to run this key sequence. All of this takes a while to getting used to, but don't worry because once you've got the hang of it, it's pretty easy to understand the key binding notation that Emacs uses. There you have it, you now understand the key binding notation used within Emacs and you should now be able to read and follow along with the majority of the documentation and tutorials around the web. Be sure to continue with the next video in the Emacs from scratch course and if you haven't already then subscribe to my channel to be kept up to date with the latest videos.